Hi, currently reporting from Los Angeles International, otherwise known as LAX, probably one of the most busy airports that I've been to. But uh, luckily for you guys, this three hour flight is just about to be like three seconds. Let's go to Texas. So last time you guys heard from me was actually at LAX. Since then, I've landed in Austin, and this is actually my second day here. Yesterday, we touched down in the afternoon, and I was actually pretty tired, so I decided to take it easy. But I did stop at Texas Card House for a few hours around 10 p.m. I knew I wasn't gonna play long, so I didn't vlog it, but I just wanted to get a feel for some Texas poker of what it was gonna be like today, since that's where I'll be vlogging from. And my first impression is that it's gonna be a lot of action. They have bomb pots included as part of the game. They do double board PLO, they do uh, straddles, everything that I'm a fan of, and hopefully you guys are as well, at least for watching some content. Unfortunately, the biggest game they had was 2-5, but honestly, it played pretty huge, probably like a 5-10 in Los Angeles. So I'm definitely fine with that. If a 5-10 opens up today, I'll try to jump into it, but it seems like the 5-10 doesn't go too often, mostly just 2-5. The buy-in structure is match the stack, meaning you can buy up to the biggest stack at the table. It's not quite as big as uncapped, but it's still fairly large. And uh, yeah, it should be a good time. I'm about to head over there right now. I'm gonna play pretty much all day and report back all the interesting hands as per usual. A quick note before we get into that, however, Next vlog will be from The Lodge, another local card room in the Austin area. I'll be playing on the stream that they have there. It's gonna be a 5-5 uncapped game, so it should be a pretty big game, and it's gonna be a first for me, so I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. That's gonna be the next vlog, so if you guys are into that, subscribe and stay tuned for that next video. Today's plans, however, Texas Card House. Let's go play some cards. All right guys, finally playing some Texas Hold'em in Texas. And in the first interesting hand of the night, we're gonna start things off with Queen Jack. There's a cutoff open to $20, and from what I've seen so far, this player is competent and knows what he's doing. And what that means is that he'll probably be opening quite a few hands from late position. So with Queen Jack, I think it's fine to put in the raise actually and play it a little bit aggressively. So I make it $70 to go. Everyone folds, but the cutoff makes the call. So heads up in position to a flop of 10-4 deuce with two clubs. Cutoff checks it over to me and I continue betting for one third the size of the pot as I would with pretty much all my holdings here. And my opponent makes the call. So we're off to a turn card here, which is the eight of clubs. This time when he checks it to me, we have a pretty clear check considering that he's gonna have a lot more flush combinations than we would. And I'd probably be checking almost all my over pairs, at least the ones without a club. So with queen high, I'll probably do that as well. On the river though, we find a miraculous offsuit nine. So all of a sudden we end up with a straight. He leads out for $125. I'm for sure gonna go for a raise, but because it's not a spot where I'll have a lot of bluffs, there's no need to go too big. So I only make it $325. He lets it go pretty quick, but we take down the first part of the night. This next hand is a lot less straightforward, I guess you could say. There's a middle position open to $20. The button makes the call, and I look down in the small blind at a suited ace. In this case, I think it's definitely better to put on the squeeze and try to isolate at least one of these players. So I make it $110 to go. By the way, folding is probably fine as well. Just wanted to get that out of the way. But anyway, I make it 110. The original razor calls and the button calls as well. Flop is pretty interesting. It comes down queen eight four with one spade. So we flop middle pair, top kicker. 
Seems like we're ahead fairly often, but at the same time, there's no need to bet too large just to deny equity from overcards to the eight. So I put in a bet of $110. Middle position player makes the call, not really a great sign. And then the button quickly announces all in for $1,157. And despite the fact that this is a massive raise, it's often gonna be indicative of a hand that just wants folds, such as flush draws, maybe a combo draw, or maybe a queen, but I just don't see top pair playing this way. So even though it is a lot of money, I think the play here is to call. However, the only concern in the hand is that we did get called by the initial raiser, and if I make the call here, he's still gonna be left to act. At the same time, I feel like this could easily be a situation where we fold out a better hand from the middle position player and just go heads up against what I believe is a draw from the button. And the reason I say that is it's just gonna be so difficult to call with a queen here if that's what middle position's got. If he's got a set, I mean, God bless him, but what seems most likely to me is he's either got a hand like ace queen or king queen, or maybe even a hand like pocket jacks or pocket tens that decides to call on the flop against small sizing. All this is going through my head and I decide on calling. A little bit sketchy, but those were my thoughts in time. Now the only hiccup with this plan is that we're pretty much banking on the middle position player folding whatever he's got. And it seems like that's the case because he starts thinking it over, thinking it over. A few minutes go by, then five minutes go by. Someone eventually calls the clock on him. At this point, I think it's pretty likely he's got a hand like ace queen. My hand looks a lot like aces or kings, and I really wouldn't blame him for letting it go. At least that's what I'm thinking until he finally announces all in right before his clock runs out. <laughs> okay, so I ask for a count, and he's got just under 1,800. So it's 600 more for me to call into a pot that's gonna be around $5,000 if I do make the call. Now it's very obvious we're behind, but also getting such a good prize to hit an eight, maybe a backdoor flush, and maybe even an ace might bail us out if middle position has king-queen suited, for example. So after doing some quick math in my head, I flick in the extra 600 bucks. Definitely not happy about it, but that's just kind of the way this hand went down. Unfortunately, the turn is a six, the river's a jack, so we don't improve. The button just announces I missed, so he did have a draw after all, but the middle position player shows pocket kings, which I definitely did not see coming. Given how the hand played out pre-flop, seems kind of weird that he took that long to make the call on the flop, but I guess it worked out for him. So nice hand, and I add another 3,000 to the stack. The third hand of the night is just as much of a mess because it's a $10 double board PLO bomb pot. And what that means is we all throw in $10 pre-flop, we get dealt four cards, and for that hand we play PLO with two flops, two turns, and two rivers. Most of you are going to be familiar with this, but for the few of you who are not, that's the best way I can explain it. It's all going to get a lot more simple once I put the graphics up. So anyway, we look down at King 975 with two suits, and the flops come out 10-5 deuce, 6-4-3. So on the top board, we just have middle pair, and on the bottom board, we obviously flop the nuts with 7-5. Action checks to the end of the gun player who bets the maximum possible, $90, since this is pot limit Omaha. The button makes the call, and seeing as we're only playing one board, I elect on just a call, and the big blind calls as well. So four ways here to the turn. Top board comes the eight of diamonds, and the bottom is the jack of clubs. So because we still have the nuts on the bottom board, and I feel like this is just gonna check around pretty often once the uh, flop better gets called in three spots. I actually decide to lead here. Not really sure if that's the best play, but anyway, I put out $300. Big blind makes the call, the under the gun player makes the call, and the button folds. River cards are the jack of diamonds and the eight of clubs. Interestingly enough, we make a straight on the top as well with 9-7 of hearts, and on the bottom we still have 7-5 for a straight, even though the backdoor club draw came in. However, we have moderately strong hands on both boards. Pretty unlikely that we're going to get scooped here, so I feel like the best play is to just pot it and try to get folds from my opponents. So that's what I do, I bet $1,350. The big blind goes for a long think and eventually makes the call. The under the gun player thinks for a while as well, but he decides on a fold. We show down and long story short, end up chopping it up against 10-7-6-deuce, 
with two clubs. So our straight is going to scoop it on the top, but my opponent actually did make a flush on the river on the bottom. So we're chopping this one up. I'm definitely not an expert, but chopping up a big pot is more than okay with me. In the next one, we go back to a game I'm a little more comfortable with, just two cards instead of four, and even more comfortable when I look down at pocket queens. Good news is, there's an open from middle position, the button makes the call, and if I'm going to be raising ace eight out of the small blind, I'll definitely be raising queens as well. So I make it 110, just like the first hand, and just like the first hand, both of my opponents make the call. So three ways here to a flop of six, five, deuce, rainbow. I continue betting for $110. The early position player makes the call, and now the button raises it to $375. And to be honest with you guys, I was this close to just folding it right here. And the reason I say that is this is the same player that went all in with the flush draw earlier in the night. I feel like he's not going to be bluffing too often now since he probably isn't expecting to get a lot of credit from myself. And for that reason, I think it's actually fine to just ditch the queens here and now. But then I realized, hey, maybe he could be raising like pocket tens or pocket nines, hands like that, that he thinks might be the best hand. I decide on a call, treading carefully though, and the player behind me calls as well. Now off to a turn card, still three ways, and it doesn't really get much better. It's the three of diamonds, so now we lose to any hand containing a four. I check it, middle position checks it, but this time the button slows down and checks it back. So we're off to see one last card, which is the three of clubs. Seems like a decent card since now we beat a hand like 6-5. But I'm not going to come out and bet since the board is still much better for them than it is for me. So I like to check it once again. Middle position checks as well. And now the button changes his mind again and decides to bet to the tune of $650. Looks pretty value-y. Seems like it's time to let it go. However... I convinced myself that he could have some bluffs here and we're getting a pretty good price, so I put in the call. In retrospect, we just don't beat enough hands here to make this call profitable. The player behind me calls as well. Just goes to show how poor my call is. And uh, the button shows pocket fives, so we're up against the boat. And I only have myself to blame this time, I think. The silver lining, though, of losing big pots is that once you pick up a hand you don't get that much credit, so you get to go for a lot of value, right? So I can't really believe my luck when the very next shuffle, I'm on the button looking down at pocket aces. Couldn't ask for better timing than that. The straddle's on in this hand and we see a limper from early position. I raise it up to $50 and now the straddler makes it $200. Action folds back to me and I would almost always recommend to put in a re-raise preflop if you have the option with pocket aces. But in this exact scenario, my opponent only has $500 behind, so I feel like it's going to be pretty easy to just get the money in post-flop, and in case he's getting out of line, I don't really want to shut down all those possible bluffs. So I elect on just a smooth call this time, and we go heads up to a flop of King-8-3 Rainbow. Definitely mixed feelings about this one, because if he's got a hand like Ace-King, obviously we're going to get it all in, but... If he re-raised pre-flop with like queens or jacks, now a king high flop might prevent us from getting all the money in. And it seems that might happen when my opponent starts off with a check. I just check it back. Turn card is pretty miserable, even though it looks kind of cool. So now we have three of a kind. Pocket queens or jacks are even less likely to put in more money. And that seems to be the case here because my opponent checks for a second time. Once again, I check it back, just praying that something happens on the river. It's the deuce of diamonds. The straddler checks it for a third time. Now it's finally time for me to bet. I decide to go for a little bit of a bigger sizing, trying to make it look more like a bluff than some thin value. So I put in $300, but he snap folds. The one time I decide to slow play aces preflop, the board comes out miserable. I don't even have time to think about it though, because the very next shuffle again, Hijack opens to 20, and I look down in the cutoff this time at pocket kings. I don't know what's going on here. Three hands in a row, we look down at queens, then aces, then kings. I make it $70. The big blind cold calls, which is nice, and the hijack calls as well. Flop comes down ace high, but there's a king. Very good news. Action checks to me. I continue for $80, and everyone folds. <sighs> Frustrating last few minutes. Lose a huge pot with pocket queens and win very small pots with aces and kings. 
Anyway, moving on to the next hand, we see an early position limp, and I look down at queen jack of clubs in middle position. I raise it up to $40. The button makes the call, and the early position player makes the call as well. So three ways here to a flop of 10-5-4 with two clubs. So we flop a queen high flush draw and two overcards. I guess there's some potential for a straight draw in the future as well. So when the action checks to me, I'm going to continue betting. I put in $40. The button makes the call, and now the early position player check raises to 150 and this is the same opponent we've been battling with for a lot of the session i proceed with the call and the button calls behind me a little bit concerning that the button's also calling since i feel like he could very easily have a flush draw himself not necessarily a bigger one per se but just the fact that he could be holding two clubs is obviously not great for us Early position continues telling his story with a bet of $400, and once again we're in a very annoying situation. There's plenty of money left behind, he's got around like 3k, and I believe I cover him. But at the same time, there's not a lot of implied odds, since if a club comes in, I doubt he's going to call too big of a bet. I don't think it's actually a huge mistake, but I'll make the call here once again. Button makes the call as well, so still it looks like we could be up against another flush draw, but it doesn't matter at all because the river is the six of diamonds. Now early position decides to check it. I'm definitely not going to be bluffing on this run out. I think it's a good spot to just give up, and the button checks behind. Early position shows 5-4 of spades, and of course we cannot beat that with queen high. At this point, I don't really get any playable cards for like two hours, so I feel like my table image is a little bit better now. The straddle's on in this one, there's an early position limp, and I look down at 5-3 of spades on the button. I just decide to go for it, I make it $40 to go. Doesn't really work too well though, because even though the limper does make the call, so does the small blind and straddler. So four ways here to a flop of queen seven deuce with one spade. Action checks to me, and I'm not gonna start bluffing into three people, but then we see a 10 of spades on the turn. Now the small blind decides to lead for $80, right around half pot. The straddler and early position limper fold, and I make the call. Obviously looking for a spade, but considering that I could probably win the hand on an ace or king river, since our hand does look like it could be ace-king a fair amount of the time. And we do see one of those cards on the river, it's the ace of diamonds. This time the small blind checks it, and the way he's played the hand so far I think is very indicative of maybe a king-queen or queen-jack type of holding. So I decide to put in a bet. It's going to be a pretty tough spot here since I shouldn't really have that many bluffs. Except for maybe a miss flush draw or jack nine suited. But most of my hands are going to be top pair or straights in this situation. So I don't blame him for folding which is eventually what he does. And actually flashes me king queen. Nice to sniff this one out and actually have a hand go according to plan. In the next one we play yet another double board PLO bomb pot. Once again for $10 each, so the pot is $90 to start, and we look down at queens with a couple of rags. First flop comes down queen 9-3 with two hearts, second flop is 8-4-3 rainbow. So we flop the nuts on the top board, and just an over pair on the other, which isn't really too great, but I'll take it. Action checks to the middle position player who is our old friend from some of the previous hands. He decides to pot it for $90. I don't really want to call and give a bunch of people behind me a price to continue, so I make it $250 just trying to isolate the middle position player, and luckily that's what ends up happening when the action folds all the way back to him, he makes the call. So heads up here to a couple of turn cards, which are both 10s. Club on the top, diamond on the bottom. Once again he checks it to me, and I see no reason to slow down here, plenty of draws to get value from, and our hand is still extremely strong on the top, albeit now losing to King Jack and Jack 8. So if we face a check raise, it's going to be pretty nasty, but we'll cross that bridge once we get to it. I put in a bet of $525 this time, and once again, my opponent makes the call. Another sizable pot brewing here, and we're off to see two last cards. The top board is the three of diamonds, and the bottom is the seven of hearts. So we end up with the nut full house on the top. I think it's a huge win for us if we can bet pretty big and get him to fold whatever he's got, since we're most likely chopping. Anyway, that's my thinking when I decide to pot it once again. I'm definitely hoping for a fold, and eventually that's what we get. Happy with the result, and we finally have a decent sized pot being pushed our way. In the last hand of the night, the straddle's on, 
There's an open from early position to $35. Middle position makes the call and the small blind makes the call as well. I'm in the big blind looking down at King Deuce of Diamonds. With a suited king, I think it's more than okay to complete here. But I do more than complete, actually. I decide to go for the old squeeze play. And the reason why is that the early position player had been opening a lot bigger with stronger holdings, but now suddenly makes it $35. So I sensed a little bit of weakness in that regard. And also there's dead money from the callers behind. So even though I don't really recommend this play at all, something you should do with this hand like less than 1% of the time, I'm going for it. So I make it $175. The early position raiser ends up folding. So it does seem like he didn't have too good of a hand. But somehow we get called by both the middle position player and small blind who called the initial raise from the early position player. Kind of funny how this ended up turning out, but nevertheless, we're going three ways to a flop of ace five three with a diamond. And even though we have a gutter and backdoor flush draw, it'll probably look more like I'm trying to trap than anything. And if I had ace king, I sometimes would check it in this situation anyway. I decide to check and the action checks all the way around. Turn card's the jack of diamonds, so we pick up a flush draw to go along with our straight draw. This time the small blind comes out and bets $250. Nothing to do here but continue with a call. And I'd be more than happy to see a fold from the player in middle position who's last to act. And indeed that's what we get. So, heads up here in position to a river card which is the seven of hearts. Now the small blind checks it and I feel like he's just got either a strong jack or a hand like ace 10 suited for example. And unlike the situation with Queen Jack of Clubs, I do not think this is a good spot to give up. In fact, I think it's one to definitely go for. One, because the board is very advantageous to the preflop raiser. And two, because I've been battling with this guy all night, I might as well give him another few hundred dollars, I think. But at least make him work for it. So I put in a bet of $600, trying to make it look a little more like a value bet than some massive bluff. The small blind decides to think it over for quite some time and eventually lets it go. At this point, there had actually been a running joke at the table that no one has shown a bluff all day long. So I decided to break the curse and flip this one over. Not something I do too often, but it was a friendly group of guys and I don't think the player on my right is gonna be too upset since he pretty much kicked my ass in every other hand. Shortly after this hand, I decided to rack up and live to fight another day. That did not go well at all. I lost pretty much every big pot, or at least every pot of significance. And every pot that I won was pretty small. So for anyone out there who's trying to learn poker, winning the small pots and losing the big ones, not a recommended game plan. But at the very least, maybe this is a sign that all the run bad and play bad is out of the way before tomorrow's live stream. Uh, at least that's the way I'm going to choose to look at it. In for a bunch, out for a lot less. You'll see the, uh, the exact numbers right here. And yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in checking out the live stream, stay tuned for the next vlog, which is going to be based on that. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you if you gave this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.